All right, we're going to get into the Word of God, and I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to the book of Genesis. Also want to welcome our folks who are joining us online as well. If you're online, thank you for joining us. I know we have so many people from so many different places uh, that call this place home. Uh, Deborah Canston or the Canstons who live in the Carolinas uh, were with us on uh, the prayer Zoom, and they're usually with us every Sunday. So shout out to them, and shout out to everyone who's joining us online. Uh, we're excited to see what God is doing in your life, and we'd love to hear your praise reports. So uh, let's open to Genesis chapter 22. And if we could be on our feet just one more time in honor of God's word. All right, you guys ready? Genesis chapter 22. If you uh, don't have it there on your phone or on your physical Bible, you can follow along here on the screen. And I'm reading out of the NIV version this morning. So if you're using your app, you can go ahead and switch over to NIV version. That's the one that we're reading this morning. And it says like this. It says, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to Abraham, he said, to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey. He he took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. And when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. And on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. I love that he said we. It's called faith. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. And as the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up, spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the, fa- the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. And when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. Until this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will, provi- will be provided. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. We come against any distractions of the enemy this morning, Lord. And we ask, Lord God, that you would hold our attention span so that we might be able to receive what you have for us, Father. Open our minds and hearts, Lord God. We're ready to receive, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You guys may be seated. I want to talk to you guys this morning about follow-through faith. 
follow through faith. And a lot of people have faith, but not everyone has follow through faith. In other words, a lot of people believe that God can do the impossible. A lot of people believe that God can heal their body. A lot of people believe that God can get them out of their depression. But oftentimes where we fall short and where we don't see the hand of God move in a supernatural way in our lives is we don't follow through on the things that God is asking of us. And the reason we don't follow through is because oftentimes Every follow through that God requires of you also comes with a sacrifice. Oh, pastor, here you go in 2024, already starting with cuss words. Yeah, sacrifice is one of those things that in our culture today, oftentimes we tend to kind of like put aside. And even in the church, we don't really talk about sacrifice anymore. Because we think that God's going to do everything. And it's true. God can do the impossible. But it requires our follow through faith. God needs some sacrifice to be able to to consume. And so what I want us to do throughout the beginning of this year is to really prepare ourselves to receive what God has for us. And in order for that to happen, it's going to require some follow through faith. And it's going to require that we sacrifice some things that we've been holding near and dear to us, right? And some of them are not necessarily toxic. Some of them are toxic, but some of them in one season of our life were actually a blessing. Isaac was a blessing to Abraham. He prayed for him. He expected him. He was waiting on him. He actually tried to manufacture his arrival by having an affair uh, with uh, his servant, Agar. Because God had given him this promise that he would be the father of nations. And so he figured since he wasn't able to conceive with Sarah, then Somehow that meant that he needed to find someone else that he could conceive with so that the promise of God would be fulfilled. But one thing you need to know is that God doesn't need your help to fulfill his promise. All God needs is your obedience and your sacrifice. If we're willing to sacrifice the things that are uh, of great value to us, we will see the hand of God operating in our lives in ways that we never imagined. And so here's Abraham waiting, not just years, y'all. He waited decades. I mean, he was probably about 100 years old by the time he was able to give birth or, or conceive or, or have Isaac. Sarah was somewhere around 90 years old. So, like, this was an incredible miracle. So imagine... After having experienced this incredible miracle, this miracle that seems so far-fetched, imagine after having experienced it and receiving Isaac and having the blessing of Isaac and having this, this baby, this, this miracle baby and walking around and every time people ask you about how the baby is doing, you're like willing to share your pictures and show them and um, you're willing to, to talk about your child. And all of a sudden, when he's like maybe 11 or 12 years old, the Bible doesn't say his age, it says he's a boy at this time, God says, I want him back. How do you deal with giving God back something that he promised you? But I love Abraham's response because if we want to have some follow through faith and and we want to be a catalyst this year for great things, one of the things that we need to do and one of the first things we need to do is we need to stay available. Somebody say stay available. Stay Stay available. In other words... Abraham didn't just get his blessing and then ghost God. You know those kind of people like, you, you, you know, you, you hook them up. You know, you send them a little cash app. And now all of a sudden you, you send them a text for a favor or something. And all of a sudden they ghost you. They leave you on red. Right? Or they act like they didn't see the text message. Because you approach them when you see them in person. 
I'm that type of person. Like, if you don't respond to my text message, I want to know. Was there a problem with the communication with my phone? Do I have the wrong number? Or what's going on here? But Abraham didn't do that. Immediately when God said, Abraham, the first three words were, here I am. Here I am. In other words, even though he received God's blessing, he still stayed available to God. I want to ask you today, when God blesses you, are you still available? Because a lot of us are available when we're waiting on the breakthrough. A lot of us are willing to serve when we're waiting on God to do the healing. A lot of us are willing to pray and fast when we're waiting for the deliverance. But then the moment that he blesses us, all of a sudden our itinerary gets too busy for God. All of a sudden, it's like, okay, God, I'm going to have to, like, you know, work you into the schedule. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, pl- uh, let me have my people get back to your people, and we'll see if we can make this happen. But that wasn't Abraham's posture. His posture was one of availability. And I pray that in 2024, we would have a posture of availability. Because it's that posture of availability that consistently keeps us going from one level of glory to another level of glory. See, Abraham had seen the glory of God through the birth of Isaac, but God had an even greater glory that he wanted to manifest to Abraham. Because he made Abraham a promise, not that he would just have a son, not that he would just be a father, of a family, not that he would just have a descendants. He said, you're going to be the father of many nations. You're going to be the father of many nations. And so, check this out. With greater promise comes greater sacrifice. Please write that down if you're taking notes. With greater promise comes greater sacrifice. And so, since his promise was beyond just being a father of one, since his promise was just going beyond being the father of a family, Mm -hmm. and his promise was that he would be the father of nations, that meant that his sacrifice would have to be that much greater. And I know a lot of us have a lot of big goals for 2024. And that's great. That's awesome. We should have big goals. We should have big expectations and big aspirations for this year. But just know that with those big goals and with those big aspirations also comes big sacrifice. Yeah. Of course. Someone, some of us want to live in purity with God. Some of us want to be closer to God. Some of us want to experience his presence. Some of us want to... Um, a breakthrough. Some of us want healing. Some of us want deliverance, but we won't get up and pray. Yeah. We, won't, we won't get up and pray an extra hour. I, I mean, I, when I speak to you about this, I, I'm first starting with me because I have, I, I'm not the person who likes to get up at five in the morning and miss, be Mr. Sunshine. <laughs> but I understand the principle of sacrifice. And since I understand the principle of sacrifice, I'm willing to get up at 545 with an attitude. Because I know the effect that the sacrifice has. I've seen time after time. I've seen year after year, season after season. I've seen how when I sacrifice the things that I don't want to sacrifice, I have a greater return on the other side. And if some of us would have that posture and and just establish that principle in our heart that you don't have to feel it and you don't have to, you know, have this excitement about it. But if you just follow through, there's some things that are going to be activated. Remember, this is what Catalyst is about. It's about something or someone that precipitates an event. 
And our actions or inactions will either precipitate or not precipitate the event or the expectations that we have of God. And so the, the blessing, check this out, doesn't come on our idea or the concept of sacrifice. The blessing comes on our obedience to God's required ask, right? And so a, a lot of people might respond and be like, well, God prefers obedience over sacrifice. And that is true. God does prefer obedience over sacrifice. But check this out. In the obedience is the sacrifice. In the obedience is the sacrifice. I mean, no, sometimes he asks certain things of us that we don't want to do. How many know when, when we were growing up or some of the teenagers here is sometimes mom asks you certain things to do. You don't want to do it. But since you want to go out on Friday, you want to get that thing done. Yep. You want to take out the trash on Thursday. So when you ask mom to send you a cash app on Friday, that cash app hit. Right? So you're willing to sacrifice because you are expecting a greater return. And so I just want to give you a few keys here for activating your faith. I just gave you the first one, which was stay available. Okay. Here's the next one. The second one is we got to be willing to let go. In 2024, our catalyst year, we've got to be willing to let go. I know some of us have a hard time letting go of things that are a blessing in their life. And there were things that God gave you for a season that were meant to be for that season. And now in this season, he's like, I need you to return that to me. Here's why. I want to give you something better. And it's not until you release it that I can give it to you. And some of us want to hold on to what was a blessing and still want what's going to be a blessing. But God doesn't work that way. God is like, you got to release that so I can give you this. Here's why. He doesn't waste the blessing that he gives you. And if you're holding too many things at the same time, you're not going to be able to be effective. And God has called us to be effective with what he's placed in our hands. Amen. And in order for us to be effective with what he's placed in our hands, that means that sometimes we've got to be willing to let go what was a blessing in one season. Here's the other reason why we, we need to be willing to let go. What God wants us to mature in our faith. Amen. One of the things that needs to happen in 2024, if we want it to be a catalyst here for us, is we've got to mature in our faith. Maybe some of us have been expecting a better business opportunity, better job opportunity, but not, we're not willing to sacrifice in this season. Maybe, maybe some of us are used to a certain routine on the weekends and going out here and there, and maybe God is saying, in this season, I need you to hold back in that area. Or in, in this season, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to walk away from this job or this business opportunity so I can focus on this thing right here. And it's not gonna have immediate returns. See, that's the hard part. It's gonna be a blessing in the latter, but it's not gonna have immediate returns. And so God asked him to sacrifice his most valuable possession, his son. Abraham. Uh, Isaac for Abraham, it meant the world to Abraham. This was the, his heir. This is, you know, back in those days, that, that was everything for you to have an heir. You had someone who could um, be, you can pass on all of your wealth and all of your possessions. Because I don't know if you knew, but Abraham was blessed, y'all. Abraham was a successful entrepreneur. He had livestock. He had property. He had possessions. He had influence. He had power. He, he had his own militia. And 
but he didn't have an heir. But now that Isaac comes on the scene, he has an heir, and now God is asking him to give him back. And so being willing to let go what is a blessing or was a blessing in one season demonstrates spiritual maturity. But here's the other thing that it does, guys. Sacri- because sacrifice is also a form of worship. As a matter of fact, I would actually say this. Because we think that worship is when we come and sing some songs and raise our hands. That's what we use to worship God, but that in itself is not worship. Okay, that's what we use to worship God. Okay, we might use a song to worship God. But sacrifice is actually worship. Can I show you through the word of God? Look at what it says here in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. In other words, when I stop doing things that I know are not against that I know are against the word of God, I'm actually sacrificing my body. When I'm, when I'm setting aside certain desires that I have, that's a form of a sacrifice. But here's what it says. It's holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Can we, can we show in 2024 God a true spiritual worship? Can we say, you know what, I'm going to negate those certain things that I've just been indulging in. And I've just been gratifying my flesh. And my flesh has been like just consume, 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 but it's never satisfied. Because that's how the flesh operates. Because it just likes to consume, 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 but it's never satisfied. But if we're willing to sacrifice and bring our bodies. And when we talk about our body, we're we're talking about everything that that we do with our body, whether it's the way we eat, whether it's saying, you know what, I'm going to wait for sex before marriage. All these different things. I'm going to not look at this because I know if I look at this film or if I look at this video, it's not going to edify my body. I'm not going to hear this gossip in 2024 because it's not going to edify my body. I've got to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice certain things because my body is a temple and as a temple, it's a place of worship. Amen? Amen. So we often ask God, Um, for certain prayers but we don't attach those prayers with sacrifice so one of the things that I want you to do in 2024 is I want you to make sure that when you're asking God for something that you understand that there's going to be a sacrifice attached to it if I'm asking God to give me a healthier body in 2024 that means that I need to attach certain sacrifices in how I eat and how I work out Come on, nobody ain't saying amen, but I know this is the truth. You're quiet, but but it's good. It means that you are allowing the word of God to resonate in your spirit. Some of us want a, a spiritual breakthrough, but we're not willing even to sacrifice an hour of sleep. Like Jesus had this combo with, with the disciples. He knew, he told them, The hour has arrived, guys. Like, I've been talking to you guys about this. The time has arrived for me to surrender my body as a ransom. The time has arrived. He he let them know. Can you pray with me at least for an hour? At least for an hour. At least for an hour. And, And some of us want deliverance. We want healing. We want breakthrough. We want all these different things. But we won't even sacrifice an hour. And I want to encourage you. This morning, 
to say, you know what, maybe I didn't start on day one, and that's fine. But say, you know what, for the rest of these 21 days, I'm going to be a part of this. I'm going to get connected on Zoom. I'm going to be, I'm going to show up to the prayer nights. Because I don't want to go another year with this bondage I've been walking with. I don't want to go another year walking around with this yoke that the enemy has on me. I want this to truly be my breakthrough year. I want this to be the year where I finally prosper at the level that God said I would prosper. And so... The reason why a lot of times, and here's the reason why we we don't do it, we're not willing to let go. We have this thing, and and, and it's an acronym that a lot of people spoke about a a couple years ago, but I think it's still true today, and it's this acronym called FOMO. The fear of missing out. A lot of us won't sacrifice or won't let go because we feel like we're missing out on something. Maybe you won't get up an extra hour in the morning because you feel like you're going to miss out on rest. But what if the enemy has you up the whole night anyways? What if you just use that time that the enemy used to have you restless and say, you know what? I'm not just going to let him attack me. On I'm going to get up and I'm going to pray. I'm going to get up and I'm going to intercede. If I'm up, I might as well use it to my best, the best of my advantage. And so one of the things that enemy wants you to do is he wants you focused on what you missed. But what if you didn't miss anything? What if you, you actually gained in the process of letting go? What if you actually gained in the process of letting go of that toxic relationship? What, what if you gained in the process of letting go of certain substances? What if you actually gained better health? What if you actually gained a better time management in the process of letting go of certain lifestyles? See, Abraham didn't miss anything, guys. As a matter of fact, Abraham actually gained Abraham gained God's trust. Abraham, check this out, gained God's favor. Abraham gained God's blessing because he was willing to let go. Here's the next thing we need to do, guys. I want you to write this down, and it's probably not going to make sense, but I bet if if you write it down, it's going to make sense. See what God said. See what God said. See what God said. In other words, whatever it is that God put in your heart, continue to envision that. Continue to have the vision for that. Abraham didn't simply see his son sacrificed as a burnt offering. He saw his son not just being a little teenager. He saw his son growing up. He saw his son marrying. He saw his son having kids. He saw himself being a grandfather. He saw what God said. And because he saw what God said, he thought to himself, somehow, some way, even if I have to follow through with this sacrifice, God's going to raise him from the dead. And so he tells his servants, he says, me and the boy are going to worship and me and the boy will come back. He saw what God said. Look at what he says here in Hebrews 11, chapter uh, 11, verse 19. It says, Abraham reasoned. That if, God, if, that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back. There are some things we've been holding on to, dear and near, because we think that if we let it go, we'll never see it again. If we let it go, well, all of a sudden, we're not going to have control of the situation. And that's the thing about faith. Faith means that you don't have control. You have released control to the one who has full control, who sits on the heavens. Yeah. 
he reasoned. He saw what God said. And check this out. He said, reason that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Because here's the thing, when we're willing to follow through on our faith, even if we don't have to completely do what God is asking us to do, for God, it's, it's, it's as if you did it. And so some of us are expecting some dramatic changes in this year. But one of the things that we need to start doing is to see what God said. Don't see what the enemy said. Don't see what, what the doubts and the fears have put in your heart and in your mind. Because that, that's what happens is that we have a better picture of the lies of the enemy than the truth of God. And I want us to change the channel this year so that we're looking at the right picture. And it's the picture that God has shown us of what he desires to do in us and through us. And because we're looking at the wrong picture, we're looking at the wrong mirror, sometimes we have a problem seeing ourselves as God sees us. We tend to see ourselves based on the circumstance or the situation. And I want us to, to come and begin to fly above of the circumstance and the situation, to allow our, our spirit to go above of the circumstance and the situation. Yes, I might have some failures, but that doesn't make me a failure. Yes, I might have had some mistakes in the past, but my life is not a mistake. Yes, I might have had some fears in my life, but that doesn't make me a fearful person. Yes, I might have had some doubt in the past, but no, I'm not a doubtful person. In 2024, I refuse to allow my past to be my mirror. In 2024, I will make his word my mirror. Who's ready to make his word? His word. His word, your mirror. He says that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. He says that he's got plan, plans for my future. They are not to destroy me. I'm going to make his word my mirror. It is the Lord who goes before me. Deuteronomy 3.18, it is his word. It, it is the Lord who goes before me. Luke 137, nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. So number three, we got to be willing to let go. Number four, I just told you, we need to speak faith. Amen. Stop speaking fear. Stop speaking doubt. Stop speaking defeat. Stop speaking failure. Speak faith. He says, we will come back to you. What I've seen in the spirit, I'm going to declare it in the natural and when I declare what I've seen in the spirit, it becomes prophecy. We need to stop speaking those thoughts that the enemy has attempted to plant in our hearts and start speaking what God said. And if he hasn't said anything to you, then read his word. I promise you, you're going to find something that he said about you that speaks the, the victory that he wants to declare over your life and he wants to do in your life. Is the last one, guys. We've got to act in faith. We've got to act in faith. We can't just speak faith. We've got to act in faith. Speaking faith is good, but we've got to act in faith. See, Abraham didn't just reason. Abraham first reasoned, and then he acted in faith. 
and he didn't stop going to the mount and that God gave that God instructed him to go because when God gives you some instructions you might not feel like you want to do it you might it might not be your desire to do it but just keep on walking and as you keep on walking in the direction in the instructions that he's given you keep your ears open because he might have new instructions because as he's walking to the mountains and he's preparing everything and he's like setting up the wood and he's like okay God like uh, when are you going to speak now like he's binding him up in other words he tied his son up and like you know it's getting kind of close now God come on like this is my son Isaac you said that this is going to be the heir and he's tying him up he's getting the wood ready and that's going to be some of us this year there are going to be some things in your life that you, it's going to be so hard for you to release. But as you're releasing them, you're like, all right, God, um, letting go of this relationship. Or what are you going to do now that I finally broke it off? Oh, God, um, you said you were going to open this new door for this business. And uh, I'm letting go of this salary that I had. I just want to give you a quick little test testimony. Some years ago, I used to work for a pawn shop. I was back in 04. And then at the time, I was just had graduated from the University of Rhode Island with my bachelor's degree, and I was working at a pawn shop. Here's why. It was a very good salary, and they paid for all of my medical benefits, and, and it was secure. But in the process, I was also getting my license for real estate. And I was like... You know, I, I want to get into real estate, but this is a secure income right here. And like, I don't know when my next transaction is like, they, they pay you by transactions. It's not like a weekly thing where you see the check just come in. And one day, a cousin of mine came to the pawn shop and uh, we were chatting. He said, what are you doing here? He's like, you know, he's like, I you know how to speak, he's Dominican, he's like, you, you know how to speak English, you know how to speak the language, you just graduate. What, what are you doing here? Two weeks later, I left the job. And transactions just started coming. Transactions started flowing. Why? Because I was willing to release something that in one season was a blessing, but God was like, I got something better. And maybe some of you, I've been wanting to walk away from certain addictions. I've been wanting to wait, walk away from certain substances. But you feel like it's what keeps you calm. But the Lord is saying today is, if you're willing to release that, you're going to get my peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding. In other words, I'm going to give you the type of peace that's not based on circumstance or situation. I'm going to give you the type of peace that just flows through your connection with me. I just want to encourage some folks this morning to act in faith in 2024. This is going to be your catalyst year if you do what God's been calling you to do. Let's be on our feet. Some of us have been asking for the fire of God. You know what he needs to spark a fire? He needs some sacrifice, y'all. He needs something to consume. So maybe if you haven't surrendered your life to him, or maybe you've been just kind of like wishy-washy, just kind of like, you know, showing up to church, doing the Sunday thing, but you haven't fully seen what God has for you. And you're like, I said, I, I surrender. I've tried my way and it hasn't worked. If that's you by faith, I want you to stand out of your row, maybe come here to the front. That's just an act of faith. All heads bowed as, as we pray. If that's you, just, just come up to the altar. As you sacrifice, there's going to be like this 
tense moments where you're like waiting on him. But the beautiful thing about our God is he's always on time. Always on time. He's always on time. He doesn't miss a beat. He's always on time. I promise you, this is, this is the, something that, that even myself, I'm going through this year, is that having to, to release certain things I, I've been holding on to. Things that have been a blessing, but, but I believe that as, as we do this, as we let go what God is asking of us, we're going to have a breakthrough year. It's going to be a catalyst year for us. Ushers, get ready to pray over these folks. Ushers, get ready to extend your hands over these folks as we minister God's presence and as the worship team leads us.